Good morning, everyone, Good morning. and then welcome uh, those of you that are trying to draw out from this Connecticut weather. Um, just a couple of announcements. I want to read a couple of cards that we have received. This is a thank you card from uh, the family of Mildred Spiegel, which is Nancy Wright's mother. Thank you for your words of sympathy, your voice of concern, your gesture of caring, and the love you offer. By the way, Nancy is doing awesome. She is back to her normal self and telling me all the stuff about Plateau United Methodist Church that I never knew. <laughs> uh, and this one says, Dear Church Family, just wanted to say a heartfelt thank you to my church family for all the kind and caring thoughts and prayers Tom and I had been showered with. Each day, in many ways, I was reminded, God's got this. I have so enjoyed the flowers sent by the church. Love to all, Gail and Tom. Gail, it's good to see you in back in church today. I didn't even look at this thing. Everything you want to know is on the back of this sheet. Is there any anything else that anybody would like to share in terms of announcements? Ladies first. Joyce? Well, not really an announcement, but I will put uh, Kathleen Wishman on our prayer list. That's Beth's mother. She's in the hospital now and being released to hospice when they get a bed for her. So prayers for Kathleen Wishman. We'll get to that in a little while. Gary? Uh, former member here, Bradley Smith, he passed away this week. Uh, he got that impressive. So prayers for the family of Bradley Smith. Any other announcements? I'd like to reiterate about the April the 2nd uh, trip. This is for anyone who would like to go. Uh, it's called the Easter Celebration that's going to be held at Wood Long Baptist Church in Conover. Uh, please sign up. The uh, sheets are outside in the narthex. And actually, I can take in more uh, uh, six more seats uh, to go, or tickets for the uh, play called uh, Cotton Patch Gospel. Uh, I need your money today, though, if you're going. Any other announcements? Let's begin our service. We continue our movement through the Lent season this week with another kind of letting go. This week we will lament that so much of life is out of control. This is frustrating to us and so sometimes we have been tempted to believe the sayings that tell us if we just think positively, we can turn it all around. Yet our experience tells us that this doesn't always work. Let us turn ladder climbing toward the expectation of a perfect life into garden tending, nurturing what is, and embracing our holy, good enough lives.
Holy One, our light and salvation, we call out to you. Sometimes afraid of the adversaries in life, shelter us in, shelter us in days of trouble. Lead us on level paths. Open us this day to your grace and peace. Transform our frustrations into simple and good enough moments that fill our days. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite the children now to come forward for the children's message.
Have you ever tried to herd chicks? Just ask one of the local farmers. What if we would let go of needing all things and all people to be just so? Instead, learn to dance with the unfolding of that which is not ours to control. Let us take a moment of silent reflection. Hear this compassionate word from the psalmist. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Know that already God is offering us freedom from feeling alone and fixing what feels oh so wrong with this world. Inviting us to let go of the need to be God so that we might recognize that God is with us, offering courage in difficulty. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen.
few moments to share our joys and concerns. So if you have a joy or a concern, allow the spirit to move accordingly. Our son, Shannon, received an excellent report Friday from his doctor. As long as he follows the directions of living a, a normal and having a normal appetite and eating right, but his blood pressure is good, all these tests are, came out just perfect. Let's use the word perfect. We believe God is, is good. God is good. Our second joy is if you saw the paper this week, our grandson, Noah Messick, was selected first place out of the North Carolina National Teachers Association competition, which is in, in singing. That includes all the universities and two-year schools that participate in this event. And the second step now, is him going to the regional competition to sing. And if you haven't seen it on Facebook and all the other things, he has an excellent, beautiful voice. And we're so proud. And we're so proud. And we just thank God for this wonderful blessings. And sometimes we take them for granted. But we are so blessed. Thank you, Ms. Any other joys or concerns? Yes. I like the church to remember my son Tracy. He's having a lot of back problems and he's got one church and they have to get a second opinion now. So hopefully next week we'll go see someone else. So prayers for, for Tracy and his back issues. Yes, Joyce. In addition to Councilman Quisner. I'd like to put Nikki Sane on our prayer list. He's my cousin, and he's having a part of his foot removed this week. So for Kathleen Wisnin and Nikki Sane. Yes, Alice. Uh, prayers for Jim Lynn Dowling. He's having a lot of back problems. So 
we are expanding our snack ministry because you are responding so well and Barbara is um, finding every spare minute of her time to put those together, label them. And now we're adding uh, the EMS crew at Probst Corners in addition to uh, Robinson Road Hospice. So that's, that's wonderful that we're caring for the community that's, that's around us and those that, that serve, serve us. Any other joys and concerns? Let's pray. Almighty, gracious, and loving God, we thank you for this day, albeit a little chilly today, but Lord, uh, the sun is shining, the SUN, and uh, most obvious and definite, the SON, uh, your Son, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we've shared some concerns that need your attention. We know that you're already on top of it, Lord, uh, addressing every single issue. We give you thanks for uh, those that have gone through uh, procedures recently and recovered uh, tremendously, for those that are, are still uh, suffering and, and need attention and healing. For those that are grieving uh, the loss of a loved one, uh, Lord, be with them and give them comfort in this time of grief. Lord, be, be with us all as we go through this um, time of, of trial, I'll call it, um, with prices increasing and just the, the cost of, of surviving each day uh, gets higher and higher. Lord, uh, give us the the grace and wisdom and the knowledge to um, accommodate those situations that we can get through and at the same time always be open to helping those uh, that have less than, than what we have. Lord, that is what you would have us do in any situation and this church does so well. Lord, uh, be with the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia as they, they fight this horrible situation there. Be with the people in the surrounding countries and the Polish people that are being so grateful and taking uh, refugees uh, into their country. All the people that are offering aid and assistance, Lord, uh, be with them as well. We pray for a peaceful resolution to this conflict, Lord. And only you and your intercession can make a difference. Lord, as we close this time of prayer, we close it with the prayer that your son Jesus gave us to pray. A prayer that gives us assurance in all that we do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let me bless these snacks here. Heavenly Father, good and gracious God, we thank you for uh, the folks that have gone out of their way to uh, provide these snacks that will go to the hospice facility on Robinson Road and also now to the Probes Corners uh, EMS station, Lord. Bless these snacks in a very special way that they provide uh, nourishment and nutrition to those that, that will be eating them. Lord, to fill them with your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
think it's from Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse 31. Hear these words. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, or Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow and the third day. I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. God's word for God's people. Amen. themselves to be welcomed. Sisters and brothers, I commend to your love and your care Jean Harrell, whom we this day receive into the membership of this congregation. I ask that you do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. Jean, please affirm your intent to join the Plateau United Methodist Church by committing to the fall to attend both regular services and additional activities, to support the church financially to the best of your ability, to serve the church's mission locally, regionally, and or worldwide, and to live your life in accordance with a commitment to Christ. Thank you. 
Baptist Church, let's give Jean a plateau round of Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, I ask that you come and be with us now. In these quiet moments, Lord, help us to accept what you would want us to take away. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Have you ever noticed how the airlines have really crazy rules and the way they set airfares sometimes I think <coughs> defies comprehension. I can remember back a while ago Maddie and I were going to Salt Lake City for, for some event and when we started checking airfares out of New York to Salt Lake City, we found that it was cheaper for us to go to San Francisco, stop over, change planes, and then fly back to Salt Lake City than it was to fly directly to Salt Lake City. It was like $120 cheaper to fly 1,200 miles more. San Francisco is 600 miles further than Salt Lake and we go 600 miles one way, 600 miles the other. What a crazy system. Usually it pays for us in life to know what our true destination is before we end up starting out on a journey. Now, in our scripture this morning, Jesus knew where he was going. And he probably never had a set of written goals, but there was no hesitation whatsoever about where he would end up. And in the scripture, Jesus' eyes are set, they're focused on Jerusalem the holy city. That was his destination. And this was God's call for him in his life. He obviously knew that it would mean that it would be trouble for him. It would be painful for him. It would result in his death. He tells us in this passage, surely no prophet can die outside of Jerusalem. He knew he was going to Jerusalem and that that outset would be fatal for him. Yet, even knowing that, he didn't turn around and go back because he was committed. He was courageous. And most importantly, he cared too much to turn back. Now you might ask, well, who did he care for? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Because I think he cared, first of all, for the people of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you were not willing. Well, later on in that day we know as Palm Sunday, Luke tells us, as Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw that city, that he wept. And he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day that what would bring you would be peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. 
The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every single side. They will dash you to the ground and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. That was Luke 19, verses 41 to 44. Forty years later, that prophecy was ultimately fulfilled. The Roman army stormed Jerusalem and destroyed the temple completely. Jesus loved the people of Jerusalem, but he couldn't help them if they rejected the message that he had come to bring them. On that day long ago, all he could do was weep for that city. But don't regard Jesus' weeping as a sign of weakness. Can you imagine the courage that it took him to go to Jerusalem, even knowing in advance that he would die there? 33 years old, still a young man with amazing promise, a possible world of adventure just laid right there before him. And he could have literally had it all, with no pain, no suffering, but he turned his back on all those pleasures that could have been his in order to bear witness in Jerusalem to his father's love. Jesus wept that day as he looked over Jerusalem, not because he was weak, but because he was magnificent, magnificently strong. He cared for the people of Jerusalem, and he would have gladly carried them out of the well if they would have let him. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, he cried, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings but you're just not willing. You know, oftentimes I'll sit in my office and think about things and sometimes I wonder if Jesus doesn't weep over our land as he did over his own land many, many, many years ago. Certainly we are just as far from serving God as in our daily lives as they were back then. But Jesus set his eyes toward Jerusalem because he cared for Jerusalem. But it wasn't just because he cared for Jerusalem. Jesus cares for every man, woman, and child on earth, no matter what they are, where they live, or who they may worship. One of the mistakes that many of the religious people of Jesus' time made was that they thought God loved them just alone. They believed that there was something special about their tribe that made God love them more than anybody else. Of course, there are people in every tribe who believe that about their own people. And that's why human history is most often told in the great wars that we've fought. The Jewish people looked at themselves as God's very own people. And to a point, they were in fact right. But it wasn't because God loved them any more than God loved anyone else. It was because God had given them a special task. They were to show forth God's divine purpose in this world. They were to be a light to the nations of the world. But instead, they wanted to be the spotlight, not to be the searchlight seeking to save the lost. Well, Jesus set his eyes toward Jerusalem because he loved his own people, but also because he loves 
every person on this planet. And that, of course, means he cares for you and for me. He set his eyes toward Jerusalem. He knew that fate awaited him, but he didn't hesitate. If you ever had anything in your life that, or a point in your life where you felt totally out of control, for me that was this morning, but also, it was back when I was a young child. And every year, every September, the carnival would come to the park that was very close to our, our house. And I would love to go to the carnival, and I would love to get on the Ferris wheel and ride the Ferris wheel around. But then one day, we were riding around, and the Ferris wheel stopped at the very top. The seat I was in stopped at the very top. And all of a sudden you feel, oh, what am I going to do? What's wrong? Why isn't it moving? Well, it took me a few minutes to realize that they were getting passengers off the seat that was directly below me and putting new passengers on. And very shortly thereafter, the Ferris wheel went round and round again. Well, I got off and felt pretty good about that. I was a little concerned there for a moment when we were sitting up top. A couple of years later, I was back at the same carnival and got on the Ferris wheel again. The Ferris wheel went round and round, and this time, guess what? It stopped at the top again. This time, I looked down and there were no passengers getting on the seat directly below. And five minutes went by, ten minutes went by, fifteen minutes went by, and I started to get a little panicky. You just don't open the gate on the seat and climb down the framework of the, per the Ferris wheel. A brave person might do that, but not me. So I just sat there and prayed, what am I going to do? How am I going to get out of this thing? Another few minutes went by and then all of a sudden the Ferris wheel jerked a bit and started going round and round and round. And finally I was able to get off. I haven't rode a Ferris wheel since. <laughs> Is there something in your life similar to that that just strips you of every bit of control? And we're a controlling type people. We like to make sure of what's going on, what's going to happen next. Do you have things in your life right now that you need to let go of and let God take care of? Jesus had his eyes set on Jerusalem and he knew the fate that was awaiting him. Gregory of Nazanias in 381 AD asked, Who is this Jesus? And he answered with these words. He began his ministry by being hungry, yet he is the bread of life. Jesus ended his earthly ministry by being thirsty, yet he is the living water. Jesus was weary, yet he is our rest. Jesus paid tribute, yet he is the king. Jesus was accused of having a demon, yet he cast out all demons. Jesus wept, yet he wipes 
all of our tears away. Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver, yet he redeemed the world. Jesus was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, yet he is the good shepherd. Jesus died, yet by his death he destroyed the power of death. So my question to you, friends, this morning is, have you made Jesus the master of your life? An assurance that when you do feel out of control, you can go to Jesus for a calming presence. I'll leave that answer to you. Let us pray. Lord, we, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the example that you've given us through your son, Jesus. How things must have seemed so out of control for him in his life. Yet, he had his direction set. He knew where he was going, and he was in full control. So Lord, I pray that when we get in that situation, and I pray that none of us ever have to face any close type situation as Jesus found himself in, but we all encounter our troubles. Maybe it's having enough money to fill our gas tank. Maybe it's making the decision between buying gas and putting food on the table. When those situations arise, help us, Lord, to remember that you're always with us and that you never, ever put us in a position that's beyond our control. Lord, thank you for blessing us the way you do. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please rise now for our closing hymn.
blessing for when you realize everyone is struggling. Blessed are you who see things clearly where struggle is everyone's normal. You walk among the fellowship of the afflicted, a club no one wants to join. And while this life isn't shiny, it does come with superpowers. Superpowers of ever widening empathy and existential courage that get you back up after another fall. And a deepened awe in the beauty <coughs> and love that can be found amid life's rubble. Like flowers that grow from the cracks in the sidewalk, these virtues blossom in you. And thank God for you. Blessed are all of us who struggle, for we are in good company and will never, ever walk alone. And now may the God who loves all of creation, especially when it's painful, and Jesus, our companion along those crooked paths called life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you now, dwell among you, and give you joy. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay strong.